What's going on, everybody? Bobby Father, Man, Eric Sheets, Amber. We're going to be talking through today's Tuesday NBA slate. I wasn't around last night, which I'm not sure if it was a good or a bad thing. I know I would have had Mitchell. What a game by him. Um, and uh, I also would have, you know, the night was sort of over, I guess, ruled by by what happened in, in, in the Buffalo-Cincinnati game. I mean, that's that was such an awful thing. And I just saw the game was postponed. I wasn't watching anything. I was driving back from L.A., um and I, I i just just what a horrible scene and and also kind of a beautiful scene the way everybody came together but really really makes you uh you know i don't know like realize like what's really important and uh it certainly wasn't getting the game and the schedule on things so i'm glad the nfl did the right thing but just just well just for fun what do you think they end up doing i mean what do you what, what do you think they I, don't end up doing? I don't know i honestly sadly think maybe some of it determines what happens in the next 24 hours um it's a, yeah, it's, but just for speculation, I mean, like, what what if he's in intensive care for like two weeks? You know, like, what what do you what do you? I mean, look look, it's rough, it's rough, but you know, it's unfortunately there's billions of dollars out yeah. there, you know, so they're gonna have to do something. I, I'm just, my I'm guess is by tomorrow they'll make a decision. I, I don't know though. I really, it's it's sort of an unprecedented thing, and I and I like that it's like this. I like that I like that they stopped. I like. I mean, that's so not an NFL thing to do, but. Um, really, really nice, you know, outpouring of support from every every athlete basically in the world on Twitter. They all want to walk off the field anyway. It didn't make a difference. It's like, exactly. No, and, and, that, and as they should, in my opinion, like yeah. that's, that's you know, that's your brother. You do everything with these people and you live your yeah. life with them. And it's not to mention this guy is also a, a great guy and has yeah. raised tons of money for charities, like just a really good guy. So just a painful one. But I, I don't know, man. What, what are your thoughts on what they'll do? I don't know. I mean, you know, it's uh, you, 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 they have to. I mean, they got. I think they have. I think they just have to play the game eventually. You know, I just. Uh, I don't know exactly when, where, and how, but I mean, they, they do have that second. Uh, that they they do have that week before between the Super Bowl and the uh, and the championship game. They always have to play with. Yeah. Uh, if they want, I mean, they could push the whole season back a whole week. I mean, if they felt like it. I mean, uh, probably tricky with people who already have Super Bowl tickets and hotel reservations and things like that. No, 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 no. I mean, you keep the Super Bowl the way it is. I mean, oh, you keep the Super Bowl. You have the, the week to flex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sure I, they could do that. I mean, it's obviously an enormous pain in the ass, but I mean, that's something they could do. Yeah. Uh, that's a good, that's an interesting point. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's funny. I, I keep, I keep, I keep bringing up that, that other, that, that similar, similar type thing that I, we've spoke about a couple of times when Hank Gathers collapsed yeah. his game. It was different because what, what was, it was, that was not a nationally televised game, as a lot of games were back then. The only right. reason even footage from that was that CBS was doing their NCAA tournament preview like show, and they were just getting footage of Loyola just for the for use of their you know in, in their preview show. Right. That's the only reason they were even at the game in the first place to catch any of that footage. And the way, way they handled that game was that he collapsed, and they literally canceled the game immediately. Right. And 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 like an hour later, they canceled the rest of the conference tournament because that right. was in the conference tournament. They had it. I don't say they had it easy, but they just gave Loyola the automatic bid because they won the you know um, because they won the the uh, the, the yeah. regular season. But they yeah. they were quick. They just canceled everything. Um, yeah, and it yeah. was different because you know it wasn't the whole season or anything like that. But but uh, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what they do. And I'm also obviously you know from a insensitive perspective, I wonder what they do with a lot of the wagers that were put in and all this stuff. I mean, yeah, like, it's a tricky situation. What, like, what, like, what do they do on like more you know if they cancel the game? What do they do on Total touchdowns from Josh Allen or somebody like that. They they would hit that. And who right. knows? I mean, who knows? I presume I presume if the game is canceled, the entire all the stats are canceled. That's that would be my yeah. And, and I would hope for anybody who played like the you know the the full you know you could play the, all the slates and everything. I, I'm sure that DraftKings did the right thing, and anybody who had players from that game, you know, just they get refunded. I, I don't know what they did. I I still have a. Uh, I still actually have that as a uh, as a live 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 tournament right now. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they they don't know what they they don't know what they're doing either. You know, because like if, if they, right, for whatever yeah. reason said you know we're playing it tomorrow, um, they'll pick it up right at the gate. You know what I mean? Right at that time. Right. So they may as well just like run you know run it you know. But uh, if they cancel it for like a week, at, you know, then then uh, they don't know. Oh. Yeah, then it becomes a part of another slate, then it's really hard to hard yeah. to use. So DraftKings is not that anything. They 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 have they they've just, oh, they just, okay. just it's literally a live tournament in, in the lobby right now. Yeah, my, my guess is I guess my guess is we'll know in the next 24 hours, but it's yeah. it's weird. Um yeah. all right, well well with all that, like yeah, we're going to a sport that is a little little well, I guess a little more player friendly, a little a little less brutal, less less to worry about as far as that goes. 
um, in the NBA. There, there. It's a three game slate. There's an some some. I think there's like an, some interesting plays you can make on this kind of a, a little slate. Uh, so we'll we'll get into it because it's it's you know I I used to hate these little little tiny slates because it was too obvious and too chalk driven and all this stuff. I find that I've been doing really well on these little slates uh, compared to even some of the big ones this year. And and I think this is I think that I'm just you know taking stands and, and trying to get really creative in one or two spots and and you know going with a, a you know a couple of really low owned guys with 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 the, most of the heavy chalk and it's. It's worked out well for me, so hopefully it will again tonight, and hopefully it will for you guys. And let's jump into it with the first game, Boston and OKC. Sheets, what do you have here? Because I think this is, uh, I mean, you, you, what's cool about tonight is you have some pretty large total games. And you have Boston, and you could worry about a blowout, but it's, you can't really worry on a three-game slate as much, and they're in OKC at least. So there's uh, literally everybody on Boston is showing up as a reasonable play for me, and Kind of curious what you're doing here, and, and pretty much the same thing on the other side, to be honest with you. So, so what do you got for this one? There, there are five Williamses in playing this game. How <laughs> funny is that? Uh, you have Robert Williams, Grant Williams, Jay Williams, Jalen Williams, and Kenrick Williams. I mean, but five Williams in the same game, which is, which is kind of it'll be yeah. interesting to see uh, see the announcers. <laughs> but they'll they'll probably go by first names and stuff like that. Anyway, yeah. uh, speaking of which, uh, my top value in this game, and and by the way. I don't see that much great value so far uh, yeah. tonight. Um, it's my top value overall on the slate right now is Robert Williams at 4,200. Um, and even that is not, you know, anything earth shattering. Um, right. But that that's what I have as, as the best play here is, is, uh, is, is Robert Williams. Uh, the, the OKC guys, I, I, you know, dude, I just can't get it right ever. It, it's really hard. I mean, the, all these values. I mean, like I played Baisley the other day, coming off the bench, he didn't play. Or so, you know what I mean? That's like, what I'm saying. You, you have that yeah. real risk with them, don't you? I know you really do. Um, yeah. I, I just want to only play guys that are starting. I, I just that's the way it's going to be. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and and you know what? What's his name started the Jay Williams, and um, uh, it was two games ago actually. Yeah. And boy, oh boy, he was on his hands and knees to get to his 15 fantasy points. I mean, it I mean, was I mean, I, actually, you know, I saw it a little differently. He did absolutely nothing. And then he scored 10 in a minute. Yeah, I guess. I <laughs> that's, guess. That's, that's just sort of the way it's going to be. I think he had, uh, he had like he has, he has, he has, one play. He's played 42 minutes in the last two games. He has not made a shot. You know what I mean? That's, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I literally don't know what to do with this. Now, again, the, the top guys, I mean, yeah, I mean, let's, uh, I mean that's fun. I mean Tatum's a good play, and and uh, and Shea is a good play. How, how are you going to get to them? Uh, I mean, I, it. I I don't have a preference between the two. I think they're both good. I look. I see Shea lower owned at this point. Um, so I guess I would I would try that if that's the way it's going to be. I I can't imagine him being lower owned though, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess in this game, uh, Robert Williams and Shea would be my two favorites, I suppose. Yeah, um, I, I have it like I think that Tatum and Brown are both are both pretty good plays. I think you, you play one of you, you you try to play one of those guys, um, and I think that I think that Jalen Brown would actually be probably my preferred guy just at the savings, and he's been pretty consistently in the in the in the range where you want him. Not not you know, and, and again, it's a plus matchup if the game stays close. But both those guys seem seem fairly very reasonable to me. It's really interesting because like they're all going to get ownership. Like there's I don't see anybody blowing away the field here unless Robert Williams is out. Then you'll get Horford at mega chalk. But I think that's how you how you divide it. I think Robert Williams or Horford. I kind of slightly prefer prefer. I, I like Robert Williams, but if, if 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 ownership and everything all being equal, I feel very safe about Horford's minutes. Um, and or I feel safer about Hor Horford's minutes than I do about about Williams, but. Williams definitely with the higher upside. So it's a little tricky to decide between those two. I still think taking a shot, if Jalen Williams ends up low owned on a, on a three game, which, I would which, just which one, which, which one, the 3,300 3, Jalen Williams, um, the center, J, J, Y, Williams. J, J, Y, Williams. Okay. I guess we got to call him Y Williams. We've got to come up with a name for that at some point. Um, I'll take that shot on him. Uh, if, 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 if no one's going to play him, which looks like, you know, early projections aren't, don't love him and, or anything, but I, I'm going to take some chances. It's a rookie. It's, it's, you're going to have some wide range of outcomes. Um, this is a team that plays big. So probably you could bump up the minutes for the bigs for OKC. Um, although you could probably put Ken Rich on Horford and it wouldn't be a problem, but it, it is, it is interesting to see. And I, and I think they'll do the same starting thing again, but 
My, you know, again, as always, I, I think you play one of Shea or Giddy whenever you think the games are going to be close and on a small slate. They're both in play. I like Giddy a little bit better because he saves you the money. And but Shea is going to be significantly lower on. So if we do get value, getting a Tatum and Shea lineup makes sense. If we don't get value, putting a Brown and Giddy and then getting the other pieces in makes a lot of sense. So I think the Brown Giddy with uh, Williams or Horford again, it's really a take your pick for me. I think that they're both pretty close. Um, and then you. Uh, you know, you factor in, you, you you can play guys like I think Marcus Smart is reasonable here, but I, I think I would rather, you know, if I, if I want to save Derek White is certainly a guy you could use for some value. You could consider Brogdon for some value. Um, and I think that the Jalen, the, the other Jalen Williams on, on OKC would be my next favorite. The Lou Dort is, this is the kind of slate you'd want to play Lou Dort on, right? Like it's a small slate. When yeah. he was like 30% owned on, what, we had a 13 gamer and he, because he was 4,900, but when he's 5,100, no one wants to play him. <laughs> like, I don't understand it. So, yeah. so it's, you know, it's going to be a, a lot of these guys. I think there's going to be a lot, a lot of these guys in this game who look good, but again, there's just the high risk of what, how OKC uses their guys, not named Shea or, or uh, Giddy. And then there's the, uh, the fact that Boston could, could blow them out here. So let's, let's see how we feel about the other games. And maybe revisit this one. Cause it is this one. I have like everybody rated, you know, a point per dollar wise in sort of like a similar range. And it, is this the game we want to go, we got to want to go to war with, want to stack, uh, maybe not. I think that the, the, that you can make a really good argument for both the other games as well. So yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, what do you got for Washington, Mike Milwaukee? Um, I don't have a lot actually, um, except to reiterate that uh, well, a couple of things. Number one, I mean, I mean, Beal's out, right? But I, well, is he out? I, don't I think know. I think I think that I mean he's questionable. Early thing on NBA.com has him playing. Um, oh. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> I think that I think that um uh, once again I think Washington is 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 really not bad and they've been they've been winning they've been they've been beating the good teams they beat Phoenix back to back they beat Philly I mean you know this is a I don't think they're that bad um so what yeah. that means to support I mean, your argument by the way they are fourth when they with with the lineup of Morris Kuka, Beal Kaminga Akuzma uh with, with with their starting lineup basically with Gafford in there. They are the fourth best offense, uh, the fourth best uh, net rating of any team in the NBA, which is actually really supports your argument because I think that probably would shock a lot of people. But they are fourth in the NBA um, with with that particular build. So, so, so I think we can we can count on them at least you know a good portion of the time keeping this game close. Sorry, go ahead, Chief. Yeah, and no, the other thing I was going to say is I mean you know just just Rui, Rui, Rui. I mean every game. I mean it looks like. Um, I guess he had a kind of an off game two games ago where he only scored 25, but he came right back with 38 and a half mm-hmm. fantasy points. I mean, playing 30 minutes. Uh, this is a, uh... so what I was getting at is exactly what, what you jumped on is that, is that, mm-hmm. you know, if, if, if Washington is, is in fact better than people think all that does is it makes like Giannis a better play, you know, because, because it reduces the blowout risk for, for, for this game. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, then Giannis, I think, becomes uh, you know, uh, much more in play. Um, and what else do I have from Milwaukee? I mean, it's hard to get anything else with with Holiday back. Yeah, not much. So I, I would I would take a shot with Giannis. Um, and I'll tell you something else. I mean, I would I would I would go back to Rui again. I mean, until he until he doesn't. You know, I don't know until he's bad. I, I don't know. He's still still under five k, and he's still playing thirty minutes. I mean, but I don't know. It's, seems yeah. good enough to me. So uh, those, those are the two main guys I like from here. And and not and 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 the Rui once again is not projecting all that great. Um, so maybe well, this time is a, it's a very different situation because his minutes are going to be. There's no way he's playing thirty minutes if Beal plays. I mean, that would be just. I don't think he's done it all season long. Right. He's only playing. He's playing these minutes because Beal is out. Okay. Okay. Um, so, the, so that's just something to keep in mind. So maybe not then. Like if Beal's back, no. Then. But I can get behind both he and Abdia still could be just because of the low ownership, right? Like if we're going to talk about these other guys, one of those guys is going to to get enough minutes to have a game here because they're not going to play Gafford forty minutes. Against yeah, one Beale. thing I know. One thing I noticed, like Beal sort of not Beal. Uh, uh, Rui sort of needs the ball. I mean, like I, I saw him yeah. when I was root sweating him a couple of times. I think he would bring the ball up sometimes, yeah. you know, whatever. I think he needs the ball more than some of these other guys do. So I don't know if I'll play him with Beal, um, with Beal in. But so for me, I mean, if I can get Giannis in, I'm sure, I'm sure you can. You could always get one guy in. And Giannis is my preferred 
stud of everybody on the slate. So I guess, uh, I guess, yeah, Giannis or, or Giannis and then figure out the rest. Yeah, the, 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 I'm a, the thing with Giannis, it's a great slate for him. I just want to point out that part of why we've loved him so much is because he's literally had nobody else there and he's gone nuts in those right. situations right. without without Holiday. So yeah. Yeah. With, with Holiday back, it's going to be you know a little bit lower, but it's a three-game slate. Those raw points do matter. And, I mean, you know, we should basically always expect that the game is close, that Giannis is going to get 60. Every now and then there'll be a game where it's close, where it won't, but it's pretty rare where he won't get 60 plus. And that's, that, that, that might be good, you know, it's good enough probably to be the top scorer. So it depends on what value opens up to get him in and how you rate him with the, the other guys we've got on this slate, the other spend ups who are, I think are all in decent spots. Um, if holiday, if we, if it was a full go, I think he might be an interesting play. Um, and then I, I'm interested in, in one of these spend ups, even with the, the tough matchup, if Beal is back now, Beal still may not, may not play. And if Bill doesn't play, then everything she'd said about Hachimura and I would throw Abdiya into the mix yeah. And obviously put 35 back to game back to games as well. Um, 34 and 36, I should say. Um, but I think so. I think that those guys become much heavier, much more heavily in the mix if Beal is out, um, obviously. But I still think you I still think taking a shot on one of the Beal Kuzma Porzingis is interesting. And I think that Porzingis would be my preferred option at uh in, in that situation. I also like the idea of playing, even if even if Beal plays, one of Gafford, Rui, or Abdia. I think that. The, the one of those guys is going to play either the four with Porzingis at the five, or they're going to play the small ball five and be the five themselves. And I think that that's, that's kind of an interesting spot against uh, Milwaukee because these guys are willing to shoot from the outside and Milwaukee will still allow you to take three point shots from the outside. And all these guys are three point shooters. So uh, Porzingis would be interesting. And I think that he, you know, of all the spend ups, probably with, if, if Beal's back ends up low, lower owned, um, so, so for me, that's the, that's sort of where I'm at. I, one of, one of Porzingis or Kuzma being the priority and then playing with some Gafford, uh, whether it's Gafford, Abdia or, uh, Rui, I think that one of those three, and, and I, and I do think Rui probably has the, I don't know if he has the best ceiling, but he probably has the easiest way to get to 35. Um, but I, I do like Gafford too, for what it's worth. I think it's more like, you're probably looking more at like 25 to 30, but, I do think that uh, as long as they keep starting him, I'm going to take some shots there. So it's it's kind of hard early in the day today to to, to 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 make our plays because it's it just feels like everything sort of rates to be very similar, and I'm I'm not finding a bunch of creative plays. Although I I would say that if, if, if just reiterate if Beal's out, I do think I mean if Beal is in, I think that that playing these these low owned Hachimura Abdia plays are are the kind of plays that can help you win the slate if you get it right. And I do like the Porzingis. Uh, you know, home run play or whatever against. Uh... So I'll tell you something else about Porzingis. Um, so a couple of observations. First of all, yet last game they blew out Milwaukee with no Giannis and they took him out the last six minutes because of a blowout, right? Yeah. The game before that against all the Orlando scrubs, I mean, that game was over too, but they they let him in. I mean, they, they had him closed the last like six minutes of that game um, for literally no reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they have him. At, he, I mean, he's a 30. I mean, think about this. Who would have thought that, like, two years ago, like, Chris Porzingis is a legit, like, a 36-minute guy, you know? Like, wow. he, was un- he was unable to do that, you know? Yeah. And, you know, they even interviewed him. I mentioned this before. They interviewed him before the, the season. He's actually committed to, like, like a more analytical approach to the game and taking better, more efficient shots and, and all this stuff. He's having a good season. Um, yeah, he's been really good. Yeah, he's having a good season. And and uh, I don't know where that corresponds to, like, 9,400 on the slate or whatever it is, but maybe – Maybe even it feels bad, you know, just, just, uh, um, I don't know. Yeah. And, and just, just again, the, the one thing about Washington is that they project poorly. So taking shots on these guys, you're going to get them at much lower ownership than you are. Some of the other plays we talked about because they have more body Delon right back in the mix. Um, but th- th- still, I, I still like the idea of taking some shots against this Milwaukee team. Um, and I, and I think Porzingis is, might be my favorite one of them. I mean, it's kind of weird because because Washington has not had a good season, but but Kuzma's had a good season. Porzingis has had a good se- season. They just haven't had all their guys healthy together. So it's really interesting to see what you know what will happen in that situation. Anyway, uh, it's, it's a very early. If you didn't like any of that, huh? She yeah uh, yeah. What do you think? What do you think about this one? It's what is it? Two hundred ninety-five point total or something? Oh, no, it's crazy, huh? Yeah, and, and and not to mention you have like Herder and Monk both questionable and and. and um, both those guys were in play, 
uh, I think, as everybody is. Anybody can shoot the ball. Like, it literally, he's in play. And both those guys can shoot it. And, and Monk had a pretty good game the other day. Um, uh, he played He played 26 minutes. He, he scored a bunch of real-life points, 18 real-life points. I mean, and then two days before that, he freaking put up a freaking monster. In 33 real-life points. He still has that in his, in his arsenal. You know, he can still do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know about this questionable tags for either of these guys, but you know, if one of them's out, the other one's they're both probably in play anyway, but if one of if one of them's out, the other one is he, is even a better play. And Herder, I don't play all that often, but you know, I don't know. He's last two games, 35 and 40. I mean, yeah. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, and it's not like I mean, Herder got 40 fantasy points in 30 minutes. I mean, he had he had 30 real life points in 30 he minutes. He was unconscious that night. The yeah. same team that he was playing tonight. But yeah. Um, so those those are the Sacramento. I just those guys I looked at. But for me, the real um, the real uh, I guess value, the real guys I want to target is probably going to come from the other side. Um, mm-hmm. with, with Sexton out, um, I I think that that both Conley and Malik Beasley are 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 in play. They're both going to, I mean, obviously everybody's going to be popular. It's a three game slate, but you know, Beasley has, you know, Beasley's the GPP guy is going to make you make your life very miserable though. If you, if he's chalk and you, you know, if he doesn't get there because he can, he can score 50, he can score five, you know? Right. And uh, so I do like him though. I like Conley. I like Olenek uh, from that side. And I guess you may as well, you know, you, you may as well talk about the good players too. That, you know what I mean. That, that yeah. Players. But I mean, like, so. But so, no, I was, I was just gonna say. So Sabonis at ten five. Yeah. And, and and Fox. I mean, they both seem expensive, right? But it's a two hundred million point total. Probably supposed to take shots. And Clarkson at seven K two. I mean, you, I mean, this is the game you have to attack. Yeah, I mean, we we finally got the non fifty game from Sabonis the last time out against Memphis. He's been over 50 before that in seven straight games. Um, I have absolutely no problem in an amazing matchup playing Sabonis here. He would, he, I actually think that he might be a better play than the Tatums and the other, you know, 10K, the, the, the Shays. I think that Sabonis might be the best play of all those guys. Um, however, I think that he ends up with some ownership and I think De'Aaron Fox ends up with no ownership. Now, it's a high price for De'Aaron Fox based on everything going through Sabonis, but Remember, we, we're, we're always just two plays away where Sabonis gets two fouls really quickly and then the game sort of becomes Fox's game. It just hasn't happened in a while, but like early in the season, Sabonis had like eight straight games where he was in significant foul trouble limiting his minutes and Fox takes over the, the control when that happens. So I do like Sabonis as, as my preferred other spend up if I'm not, you know, other than Giannis. And uh, I also think that Olenek is, is is in play, and I think that Conley's in play, but I think I'd rather take a shot on the upside of either Clarkson or Beasley compared to those guys. Because even the thing that you mentioned about Beasley is, like, I want the wide range of outcome guys. The yeah. problem is the chalk. Yeah. It, it's, but I'd rather, like, you know, it's 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 it feels easier, it feels more possible for him to get 40 than Conley. I know Conley got there once this year, and it was not that long ago. Um but it, it, it's never an exciting play to play Conley, but it is a great matchup. So it's, it's something you have to figure out. But uh, Clark, Clarkson, at, 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 you know, a little lower ownership than these five K guys, and uh, and and then, and then the one play who, who who's never going to project all that well, and and people don't really play him a ton. I think Jared Vanderbilt in this kind of a game is a really really good play for tournaments. So I think even the early projections have him in the teens ownership wise. I don't think he ends up owned hardly at all. And I think Vanderbilt is a like there is a wide range of outcomes, but he is capable of putting up you know forty pluses completely in this kind of a game. And uh, if you're playing on Fanduel, even at fifty six, he is a player who, whose skill set lends itself a lot to Fanduel because he does get the steals quite a bit. His blocks are down this year, but he's a he's a really good steal guy. Um, just thought I'd throw that out there. But yeah, I have everybody. There's nothing like that jumps out as, oh, I need to play this guy on the slate. So it is kind of interesting. And I'm curious if there is any news that breaks later, because as of right now, I feel like you've got a, a sort of a, a mess of guys, but no one, no one who stands like the highest projected own player on a three game slate. Usually you get some guys like 60, 70 percent because something happens, there's value or whatever. But like you've got Beasley and Olenek at 38 and 37 percent projected as the highest owned players and Monk projected as the next highest owned. I think that the best thing to do is to fade those guys. Like they all have the wide range of outcome guys who who have the big, 
you know, the, the highest projection on, of ownership. Let's just fade them and play the guys who we know are, you know, at least going to get, get going to get the run and, and don't have as wide a range of outcomes. The guys, you know, like the, whether it be uh, Horford or Williams, uh, depending on whether Williams plays. Um, I think that I really like Clarkson in this matchup. I really like uh, the, the Sabonis spend up. I, I like the Giddy um, and I'm open to Jalen Brown. Uh, Porzingis, I mentioned as a play that I think it's a little bit lower owned. Uh, the, all those guys are, are sort of just some of the off the beaten path guys that have, well, or not off the beaten path, but just slightly lower owned than some of the super chalks. Um, and then I like the idea of getting one of the Hachimura Abdia uh, situation uh, and, and Gafford. Uh, but, but Gafford will have some ownership. The other two won't if Beal plays. And I think that you just jump right back on and, and take the shot that, that, that those guys have a game right now. And I would lean Hachimura just like you were mentioning so I kind of like I kind of like that as a, as a as a way to get a little bit lower ownership. But again, it's really just trying to get different in a couple spots. We're going to be live at seven Eastern tonight, not six, um, and when we'll we'll probably have a better feel for it there because early early look. There's really nothing that stands out to me in like an amazing way of, or anybody I need to play, which is pretty rare um, for a three game slate. How about you? Anything you want to finish? Um, up? Yeah, I mean, I'll probably end up. Uh... Like if Robert Williams plays, I I, I like playing him. Yeah, uh, I like playing him. I'll probably, if Beal is out, play play Rui again. Um, I think that I prefer Giannis to all the other spend ups. And, yeah, and may, maybe 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 what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to play 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 Porzingis with him or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe that's something to do. And I'll take my I'll, you know I'll probably. You know, one thing you could do, and this it's it's not it's not like an island game or anything like that, but like if you play like Conley or Beasley, you know, they're they're very they're similar in price or sort of in seven hundred, I guess. And and we talked about them, you know, Beasley's got the wide range of outcomes and Conley's a little safer, I think. Mm-hmm. Um so I you got you don't get much of a look, you only get like an hour look, but if you if you get an hour of results in these first two games. Yeah, you could, you could you could you could you could screw around with 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 Beasley or Conley, and, and and change from a higher variance to a lower variance depending on how you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And then if you have a you know a couple guys in that game, you could you know yeah. get, get get the Monk versus Herder kind of like you yeah like, yeah two v two swap you have right there Beasley and and Herder instead of Monk and Conley or something. And the, those are the, yeah Monk and, and and yeah Monk and and, uh, and Beasley are the two are the two you know two two juicy guys right right. You know, juice juice can turn sour, though, right? That's a, so, <laughs> and right, and, and the other guys are, are seem seem to be the the safer ones. Although her her is not particularly safe, but he always seems to be safe for some. Well, reason. you know, it's funny. I actually feel I I usually feel pretty good playing him. He does have some yeah. some weird dud games just because yeah. you know of, of strange situations. But like for the most part, the, the games that he's dudded have been the games where he hasn't played the minutes, which I'm probably I'm assuming are probably blowouts or that Monk was going crazy. Right. Um, but, but he, I mean, his general, he's usually 30 to 35 minutes if in a close game. Um, it's really just a matter of whether if Monk gets crazy hot or something off the bench, which is completely possible. Right. Um, and then for very large field, like weird stuff there here, I just have a list of a few guys, Trey Lyles, Davion Mitchell. Um, th- these are, these are long shot plays. I want to make that really clear. Uh, Walker Kessler in case the, that matchup really becomes an issue with Sabonis for a Linux. Um, Kenrich Williams, Malcolm Brogdon, uh, and then the Abdia, Hachimura, uh, Gafford. I don't know which, and, and, and Monty Morris in the mix as well. All of those guys are reasonable ish plays that are going to get zero ownership. So, filtering the right couple of those in, and I'll have a better idea of which ones I like once we know about Beal and once we have, you know, officially information that we probably don't have yet uh, later today. That's going to dictate a lot of what I do. So, have better stuff for you at seven Eastern time, but hopefully this helps as a first look and hopefully we don't have such a crazy night like we did last night. Oh, I wanted to make one big point that I think is really important about the NBA right now. So we're sort of in that comfort zone of, of time. Okay. Like we're in that, you know, like uh, it's been enough games because of the holidays and everything, the way it shook out, there are very few back-to-backs and there are also players sitting still uh so so which which is going to lead to things now donovan mitchell last night come on that's amazing 70 what 71 points i don't care if it's overtime I, an incredible game 
but you're going to, you're, you're starting to see more of these extreme crazy performances. I mean, in the last three weeks, we've had three guys hit hundred fantasy points, which hadn't happened in years, you know, and, and not to mention all of the studs are going completely nuts when they're supposed to basically all the time. So you're going to, I think this is a good time to like, to, to, to really, you know, try to stars and scrubs a little bit as much as you can. Um, this is a tough slate to do it, but in general, I'm leaning more that type of build, especially for the big slates. And we'll talk about that tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be a really interesting one to try to get right. Um, it's like a ton of games. I'll, I'll give you a couple of, of, of things I wanted to mention earlier that you just kind of hit on a um, couple of points. Number one is that um, these guys are really just putting up all these points, you know, and, and, and one thing about Mitchell from last night. They, they did a list of, like, the other people that have scored 70 points in the last whatever. Every one of them had, like, one assist, like, two assists. Two he assists. had 11 assists. He had 11 assists. I think between the rebounds and all that stuff, they said he was responsible for, like, 100 points or something like that. That's crazy. It, it was nuts. Um, but the other thing, it's like these these ceiling guys, not the ceiling, like these, these high-performing guys, like, there's no better example last night, okay, than, than Luca. okay? So I, you, people weren't following this. Luca was with in pure bust mode last night. He had, I think, 13 fantasy points at the half. Yep. Okay. He ended up with 63, like no problem. You know what it's I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's ridiculous. You yeah. know, um, you get you get a guy, you get guys with this much talent and this much usage and this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's just, they can do it. And listen, we saw we saw I'm gonna springboard into something else. We saw Mitchell do this before. You know, not quite there, but yeah. Right. And then we'll just, yeah, yeah, just take it over the whole game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and the whole team pretty much. And, you know, there's a difference between guys that project the same, you know, and, and, and unfortunately, you do have to know a little bit about basketball and have a little bit of a visual and a little bit of a memory to know the difference between uh, like a $9,200 guy that can, that has a possibility of getting a hundred, you know what I mean? Like Mitchell as opposed to a ninety two hundred dollar guy that's just gonna even with everybody out is just gonna get fifty five you know what I mean mm-hmm. or something like that mm-hmm. um, you, know, you keep bringing up that you keep bringing up I'll, I'll put these two other guys together like you put like like Chris Paul versus like Jordan Poole I'm tell, I, I don't know why I bring these guys up but yeah. but 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 Chris Paul's like eighty two hundred every night Jordan Poole's eighty two hundred every night and Chris Paul's eighty two hundred with no Devin Booker and and what's his name is eighty two hundred with no uh, with with no Curry. And each time I keep saying Paul, Chris Paul, this, Chris Paul, this, you're like, are you sure he's like a good play? You know, like you positive. I mean, really? And you look and like he has some good games every once in a while, and he's he gets in there, but he doesn't have like 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 seventy point upside. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Jordan Poole will, will will ruin your soul. You know right. what I mean? Like sometimes, but he's got that fifty five and sixty points that that can go. And then, so all medians are just not created equal. Well, I think Jordan Poole had 13 fantasy points going to the fourth quarter, and he ended up at 45. Yeah, right. So yeah. what I'm saying is all medians are not created equal. You right. Know? And, and you have to keep that in mind, especially especially in the end. And we generally want the higher variance guys for yes. tournaments in general, but especially we want them when, they're, when their ownership is reflecting it. <laughs> like, I know it sounds like a really obvious thing, but it's important to think about. Um, all right. Well, we'll see you guys at 7 Eastern. Should be a fun little three gamer. And then uh, we'll get back to, to some big stuff tomorrow. And we'll see what happens with this NFL stuff. And if we have more games to talk about, we'll do so. Oh, and just a little uh, update, by the way, one more, more announcement. People have asked, I'm not I'm not going to do the golf shoot for this week. There's only 20 golfers in the field. It's, it's just yeah. not something I want to play. And that's yeah. usually a general rule. If I'm not playing it, I'm not, I'm not putting out anything for it. So that's uh, that's that's about that. Yeah. And we'll get some golf stuff for, for the real tournaments coming yeah, up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Good luck to everybody. And we'll see you guys at 7 Eastern. All right.